So folks, we're out here at the shop today gonna do an inventory overview. And as you might see behind me, we're getting some more inventory as we speak and that happens quite a bit. So we got the whole crew out there. Uh, what do we have? Some grapples, some flail mowers, some tillers coming in. Sometimes they come in a hot shot like that. Sometimes they're full semi loads, but it's quite a process. It can be to get things offloaded. And um, you know, this has been a long evolution starting from working out of my house, just selling tractors and then starting to pick up attachments because when somebody bought a tractor, they wanted to get something to go along with it, like a tiller or a set of pallet forks or whatever else it is. So I started networking and kind of growing that side of the business and, uh, and it really has just kind of evolved. And if you would have asked me, whatever it was, six, seven years ago, eight years ago, if this is where it would have gone, I mean, I had no intentions of it going in this direction. I had no business plan, no roadmap that was laid out. I was content just kind of flipping used tractors, right? I mean, and, and it was good money. But uh, this is fun and this is just kind of, kind of shows you, you, you don't know how things are gonna turn out. And I don't know exactly where things are gonna go in five years from now. And I think I probably have a little bit better handle on that just because of how I've um, kind of established myself. But uh, anyway, let's take you through the inventory. You kind of pay attention to everything that's going on. If, if you're thinking you wanna get into a business for yourself, it doesn't have to be this business, but you gotta kind of look at everything that's here, right? And, and these are costs that you don't always have to get and, and spend all at one time up front, but they're gonna happen eventually, right? I mean, a, a building, you know, that was long overdue. I mean, uh, probably two years, um, we needed a bigger building and, and finally got one and we're working out of really cramped spaces. And I mean, we've got an F-450 back there. That's all we need now. We've got one trailer out here, but we have two electric fork trucks um, could have gone with the with propane, but I just felt like this was cleaner, quieter. Um, price is more expensive, but really like it out here. It's just not noisy, and it's a lot quieter inside the shop and the warehouse where um, things noise wants to rattle around and, and really echo, and so it's nicer in there too. But there's a lot of expenses that go into it, right? I mean, you want to run a business, you want to run it lean. Uh, we don't have guys that are just standing around looking for things to do. Um, try to keep them busy, and and so it's. There's a lot of responsibility that comes along with that. So on that note, let's take a look. We've got equipment for every season, front end loader stuff, three point hit stuff. We'll kind of start on the outside and do a little swing around and then work our way inside and, and see what we have going on in there too. And I am not immune to making mistakes. And uh, this piece of equipment right here, I bought it number one because I needed some tax write-offs at the end of the year. Um, but number two, I sold my Manitou a while back. Uh, it just sat around most of the time and the snow pushers that we'll talk about here in a second come in on these huge bunks they're four to five thousand pounds depending on how many and what size are on there and we needed something really big to be able to offload these from uh, the semi trailers uh, the flatbed trailers and so talking to a jcb dealer equipment is incredibly hard to find right now and uh, there was one of these in inventory in kentucky that was the only place that there was one in the whole country that i could buy he was confident it would work just fine, and uh, it doesn't. It doesn't lift up the one thing that we bought it to do, which was lift those four to 5,000 pound bunks. And so it sits here, it's for sale. We've put less than an hour on it, and that was basically trying to tweak some hydraulic settings to get it to lift more. Um, so it's for sale, gonna try to sell it. It was $105,000, I think, plus transportation to get it up here. And um, it's just, is doing nothing. I don't have a use for it. I told the guys to, to let it sit and and let's just kind of get rid of it. Is is I still think it's hard to find JCB inventory and, and construction inventory in general. So if you know somebody, let them know about this. It's uh, what is it? Late May 2023 right now. That's when we're shooting this. Alrighty. So we're looking at a bunch of snow pushers right now. I am pretty sure we have more snow pushers somewhere else too. But um, try to keep some on hand year round and then you know really ramp up in late summer early fall as snow season starts to uh, to be just around the corner and these are our most popular snow equipment or type of snow equipment that we sell so versatile done a ton of videos on it um, this is all we have left of green we won't carry green anymore unless for special order so i mean order it in the spring like now at the absolute latest if you want it for next snow season we're going to be sticking with just black um, it's universal it, it goes great it doesn't matter what brand your, your tractor is. I mean, John Deere has black all over it. Goes great with that. 
goes good on the Kubotas, goes good, good on whatever. It's just kind of a, a neutral color and it simplifies our inventory so you don't have to carry duplicates of everything and, and you know, the same sizes, just different colors. That's very expensive to do. And from a business decision, I think that while there will be some customers that won't buy because it's not green, um, that trade-off of not having to carry nearly as much inventory is well worth it for me. And then here you're gonna see more snow equipment. These are gonna be snow plows. You're gonna see manual and hydraulic snow plows mixed in here. Uh, by default, the John Deere Quick Attach do come in green. So that's just the color that those are gonna be. Um, and then black for all the skid steer quick attach. There's, I feel like there were some yellow ones, construction yellow in here somewhere, but um, that's just gonna be typically for the bigger skid steer quick attach stuff. It's just kind of the standard for that kind of equipment. All right, so here you are looking at Dirt Dog pulverizers, all right, folks? And so these have a, uh, a bunch of, a, a row of steel shanks up front and then either one or two rollers behind them. And we showed a video, I uh, did a video last year on these breaking up hard pan incredible tool um, if you have the right application for it and i'm going to be putting one of these to work too as part of our um, kind of lane and uh, gravel reclamation and you know um, whatever repurpose project i guess out at the at the barn and at our farm too and so a lot of different sizes here really cool too very 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 robust this thing is built like a beefcake um, and it's it's simple to use okay if you do have a hydraulic top link i think that makes life a lot easier with one of these tools along with any grading tool in particular, but uh, that's what you see here. All right, and so the section of stuff that's kind of around this trailer is odds and ends for a lot of different reasons. Some of it's um, things that I use or have used in the past. Others are warranty returns. Some are trade-ins that we used to take, and it's really one of the reasons I don't take trade-ins anymore because it just winds up sitting here forever and I don't do anything with it. Um, it's very time consuming to, to make new listings and do all the stuff for one-off type of equipment and again running things lean means there's not a lot of time to to deal with little specialty items like this and so we're going to probably wind up auctioning all this stuff having uh, an auction company pick it up or take it there and just have them auction it off um, if you are in the area and swing by you're welcome to see if something's for sale and and ask i don't have any prices that are just readily available um, I just have to see what the market price is and, and go from there. But that's kind of what all this random stuff is here. All right, so now we have, uh, well, we got a mixed in here. We got some Colta Packers on this side and then some more over on that side too. Um, these were a big hit last year. So uh, I think they're a really good value, really well built. Everything from Dirt Dog is just really well built. That's why we continue to work with them. Uh, they're right down in Georgia. So you're going to see a ton of Dirt Dog equipment out here for good reason. Um, we went with this all gray color now and they actually we requested it and they did it for us so it used to be not an option and it's just a good neutral option again trying to minimize redundant inventory we can special order other colors for you if you want uh, we can special order things that we don't carry from dirt dog or don't stock from dirt dog too so let us know if you're interested in something like that too we're happy to help these subsoilers here are <laughs> are are big and beefy all right and i'm hoping standing next to it i'm six foot uh i'm gonna say six foot three i'm not quite there but pretty close they're just chunky. I can't remember. These are like four or 500 pounds. I remember right. Uh, you have the double ripper, the single uh, rippers over here too, but you need a lot of horsepower to pull these. We did a, uh, used our big Kubota to pull a double ripper last year. It did fine with that, didn't it, Chris? Yeah, it did fine with that, but it was, uh, you wouldn't want to have anything smaller, I don't think. So a single ripper for anything smaller than like a Kubota utility tractor is what you want to do. We also sell um, a compact version of these two. So for the smaller tractors, that's what you want to go with. It is flail mower season. That's what you're going to see stacked up here. Flail mowers. We have more of them over there. We have finished mowers in here too. All the, the red stuff are going to be the flail mowers and finished mowers from Del Marino. Uh, out of Italy, that's where we get those from. And they come in stacked up like this. We can ship them right back out like this. Don't take too long for you to put together either. Anything that does require a PTO shaft, I always like to mention this, it does include the PTO shaft. You don't have to buy that separately. Um, all of our listings might not say PTO shaft included, but know that it is. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com.
Com. Okay, kind of surrounded here by rear blades, all right? Three-point rear blades. These are all going to offset left or right, so, or angle, I should say, left or right. Uh, the larger ones will offset. They will tilt as well. We've done some videos on these, too, showing versatility, uh, showing different applications you can use it for. Of course, it's just one of quite a few different grading tools that are out there. One of the cheaper ones as well. Um, some folks, it's their favorite. Not mine. I like some other tools better, but uh, we're going to have a size to fit your knees no matter what size compact tractor you have. Okay, folks, here you are looking at pluggers, all right? And these things are incredible. An awesome tool, a really good value. Um, quick payback, too. You know, if you are looking to get a quote to have your lawn plugged, core plug aerated uh, each year, you know, I mean, when I was living in a neighborhood, it was 300, 350 bucks to get it done. And you can pay this back in just a few years, having it yourself, do it whenever you need it. You can do it multiple times a year if you want to, or maybe, you know, do your, your parents or do your neighbors or hire it out as a side hobby. It's a really robust tool. You can add weight to it. We have 48, 60, and 72 inch. These are going to be the core plugs, okay? These are not the spikes. These take out two, three inch cores of dirt. They're going to dissolve. Just let them sit right on top of the turf. They'll be gone in a couple of weeks. Land planes here. These are the bigger guys. We have the smaller guys. I think they're inside right now, but we've got uh, 84 and 96 inch that are out here. And then the, uh, the 72, the 60, the 48 inside. These are one of my absolute favorite tools to use. Very easy to operate. These are not a challenge. I mean, you, you almost just put it down and get to work. You can adjust. Again, another hydraulic top link, uh, a, a tool where a hydraulic top link comes in handy is one of these because you can kind of pitch it back or forward if you want to be a little bit more aggressive or really just let that material flow over. But if you are regrading or leveling out a surface, this is the best tool out there, hands down. Okay, so here we've got our landscape rate collection. Again, every size that you need for a, a compact tractor, uh, 60 inch all the way up through 96 inch. Don't sell it 48, we can get the 48, but um, being that you can angle a rake like you can a rear blade, for example, I always like to go a foot wider than the tractor because when you angle it, you're, you're knocking off, not quite, but just call it a foot of width. So when it's angled, it's still gonna match up with your tractor and, and cover the tracks, which I always like to do personally. But again, a simple tool to use. You can add uh, gauge wheels onto these as well. I have not done that. I will do that at some point, um, but that's handy to keep things from digging down in and scraping through if you just kinda wanna ride along a surface to regrade a driveway or uh, regrade your landscaping or clean trails. The list goes on and on. Hard to beat one of these tools. You know, we don't have any out here that are good to show you on display, but the Thatchers. We sell a boatload of those. We actually recently switched to shipping those factory direct right from CMP to try to keep these costs down. Inflation is real. It keeps going up, and so there's certain products that we can work with uh, manufacturers to have them hold it and ship it out direct to you when you order it, and that's one of them. So uh, the Thatcher, if you're trying to decide if that's the right tool, the Thatcher rake or the landscape rake, we did a whole video kind of comparing the pros and the cons of each of those. So check that out too. They both have their place. They are definitely um, suited for different kinds of applications. Right here we have our Dirt Dog rotary cutters slash brush hog slash slasher <laughs> slash whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, these are going to be, um, if you don't want to flail more and you want to get some rough cut done, get yourself a brush hog. Dirt Dog, their cutters are different than others out there. We've done a video, all the, the little, the finer details, all right, that go into their design that they don't cost more. They just give you better engineering, um, better features for the same amount of money. So check out the Dirt Dog. Watch that video if you want to as well. Uh, but we sell a ton of these. Again, not a lot of assembly. You just bolt on an A-frame up here, your tail wheel, uh, your PTO shaft. Make sure things are greased up. Gear lube oil and anything that has a gearbox on there. Gearboxes typically, they're gonna come empty. And the reason is not because we want to, it's because it's a federal regulation. They can't ship into us uh, with gear lube in them. And so we can't ship them out either with gear lube. Okay, here are gonna be our disc harrows, all right. And again, various sizes available to match your tractor uh, from subcompacts all the way through utility tractors for these. And I should point out everything that we've shown you so far, except for the finish mowers and the, uh, the flail mowers are all quick hitch compatible. Uh, on the on the three-point hitch, all right? And so they're all gonna be category one quick hitch compatible. Um, and some of these, the larger ones, like the uh, typically the 84, the 96 inch wide three-point attachments will also be cat two quick hitch compatible. So bear that in mind. And we try to put that in every listing as well. So if there is an exception here or there, 
uh, or you don't see it listed, just feel free to reach out. Let us, or you know, ask your question and we'll get back to you and let you know for sure one way or the other. Okay, here we have some box blades, okay? Again, all the different sizes, quick hitch compatible. Another staple, one of the, the gold standards really of, of owning a tractor is having a box blade. They are very multi-purpose to be able to push or pull material, uh, to rip things with those ripper teeth that are on there and get through a uh, hard pack or through um, potholes, that kind of thing, and resurface an area. They're just sturdy. I've, I've never had a single warranty claim on any of these things from, uh, from Dirt Dog. Warranty claims in general are, are few and far between on the equipment that we sell. And, and if there is a random case um, when warranty claims get high, I typically drop the manufacturer unless there's a very legitimate reason for it. And, and so you're not going to see things like that around here. I'm not going to continue to sell things that are going to give customers problems. It's my reputation on the line. I want high quality equipment that is going to be able uh, to be used by you for years and years to come and has good features on it, right? Things that are replaceable. If there's wear areas, um, make them replaceable. So you can put a new bolt on edge on there or you know the, the rippers, the shank points, whatever it is, just something that's replaceable so that you can get more life out of it with minimal investment. Quick update too, this is our asphalt millings uh, parking lot. We had this expanded and, and all of it installed around this whole corner here last fall. I think it was September, so it's been, I don't know, eight months or something like that. It's supposed to get better with time and really firm up, and it has. We had um, a little bit more brought in along the edges and packed down because it was sinking in a little bit there. But overall, this was way cheaper uh, than having asphalt done or concrete done. Our fork trucks can drive on and off here, no problem with their smooth tires at all, uh, regardless of season as well. So this has turned out to be a really good decision for us. We got it done a lot quicker too. We couldn't get asphalt done last year. Everybody was booked out ahead of them this year, and we needed as you can tell, we needed the extra storage space, and so this has been a great, uh, a great solution for us. Behind me here, you're going to see these are uh, Oregon Tool subsoilers that we have over here ready to go. We have trailer movers over here too, and then kind of our storage area for pallets that's right here. We have all of our pallets um, custom made to, to certain specs for us for our equipment here locally in uh, the greater Kalamazoo area. We have crates for uh, shipping all the suitcase weights that we have and the suitcase weight bundles and different size pallets for flail mowers that are all heavily reinforced, um, snow pushers, different sizes, and just kind of the general uh, all-purpose pallets as well. But those guys are coming out here all the time and, and they do a really great job. It's just one of those expenses that you don't think about, right? And, and it's, um, it's not cheap, right? To have all this stuff built and just sitting here and, and it's just an extra cost that goes into shipping things out along with all the labor and other packing supplies too, but it's a necessary part of business. Alrighty folks, so here you are looking at tillers, all right? So we have anything from 48 all the way up to 84 inch, all right? So 48, 60, 72, and 84. Uh, 60 through 84, so the three bigger sizes are all gonna be Dirt Dog. Um, we can get them from Rhino as well. We're not gonna stock them. Oftentimes we can get them um, from our distributor and have them uh, direct ship to you that way. The smaller ones, we're gonna have the Oregon 48 and the Ideal, which we did a video on both of those. They are essentially interchangeable, so that's why we carry both of them. Um, very similar across the board with everything about them, from where they're manufactured to uh, the features that they have and uh, the performance of them too. Okay, so here uh, I kind of have a, a little bit of a hodgepodge, but it's primarily going to be stump wreckers that we have, uh, the, the minis and the HDs that are here, and then uh, the crates down below are all going to be weights. I think we have a lot of wheel weights that are hanging out here. We have suitcase weights mixed in, and you'll see them in other locations. They're kind of wherever it makes sense to, to put those um, it kind of creates, you know, the weights we try to keep off of uh, the upper racking if we can, just keep those stored on the floor. But the stump breakers, no problem uh, storing those up high. Uh, here we have a few trailers, okay? We have a lot of Ultratech trailers. Um, we stock some here, and then the U.S. distributor also stocks them there. So we try to keep some on hand when it makes sense and when we have the space. And then other times we just drop ship those directly from our U.S. distributor. So uh, they're going to come, most of them, in crates like this. They have changed how they ship them. They used to ship them uh, vertically, and so this is... I think a nicer way to ship them, but companies are always looking to, to make improvements, right? Freight costs are also getting more expensive too, so if there's things and ways that we can ship that are gonna offset those increased costs, we're certainly open to it. I got a few of these red Speakos here. We have an absolute boatload of these. These are, by volume, our number one seller that we have uh, as a company. And then we have the Brush Crusher BC4215 here. I uh, got a handful of those left in stock right now too. Uh, here we've got uh, the traditional Speakos, all right, um, that use bushings. These are a bit cheaper price. We bought a wholesale, a lot of them, and able to get that price down a bit on there. But they do use bushings, and so that is uh, definitely a, a downside, but it's going to be the traditional Cat 1 hitch. I uh, have some Cat 2 hitches here, too, some more stump wreckers. 
Uh, again, this is kind of turning into wherever you can fit things, whether there's free space too. We try to keep it as organized as we can. Um, up here, some grapples. You'll see some grapples kind of work their way around on different shelves as well. We sell a lot of precision grapples and we don't stock those. Those are all made to order. Uh, precision has so many sizes and configurations and options. It's just too many to try to, to hold inventory of all of those. And, and so that's going to be how some of these things go, you know, but if you can plan ahead, like if it's fall or winter and you know, man, come in spring, I want to have a grapple. Well, order it in, in early winter or late fall. That way you have it and in a couple of months and you're ready to go when spring rolls around. You know, don't sell a lot of these. And just to be frank with you, I don't always know what's going to sell or not sell. And I just don't have a lot of demand for bale spears. So we've had these for, I don't know, at least a couple of years. I'm probably not going to buy more bale spears once these are sold. Um, there's certain things that just don't make sense to carry. If they're not a high volume seller, I don't want to sit there and hold on to, I mean, this is still thousands of dollars worth of inventory, just what we have there. It just doesn't make sense. And, and so we can, or we will be able to special order that kind of an item with a lead time on it. Um, but it's not something at some point in the future, once we're out of these, that we're going to continue to carry as a stocked item. This is some overflow area for the pallet forks. We're going to have a lot more from up by the door. They're one of our most popular items that we sell. Um, these are going to be some of the, uh, the full brick guard, heavy duty John Deere frames, but um, pallet forks, again, a lot of videos on there, folks watching this that have a set of forks, they'll tell you one of the handiest items that you can have. I mean, there's sometimes months that go by where I don't take pallet forks off of uh, my tractor just because they're so handy to have around. You can use them for way more than just moving pallets around. And they're also one of the relatively affordable attachments in the tractor world. Okay, in our other indoor bay right now, this is where a lot of the other snow pushers are stored right now. Again, green is going away. So this is it. Once these are gone, they're gone, um, unless you want to special order them. More land planes in here that we have. Again, we have a lot of them stored outside. Um, the smaller ones like these are more popular, so we keep those kind of closer to where we do all of our staging and shipping out. Um, then over here, you're going to see a bunch of Oregon tillers. These are going to be primarily all 48 inch. You will have some uh, 60 inch that are left in here too, but not too many. And then the crates back behind here are going to be post hole diggers or post hole augers. These here are going to have um, shorter augers with them. So 36 inch instead of 42 inch. And so the reason for that is that a lot of, well, all subcompacts and a lot of small compacts don't have the lift height on the three point hitch. Uh, I talked about that recently on the summit when I did a 50 hour review. It's not just a summit, it's just a limitation in general. I mean, they're small tires, the axles are down low, they're, it's just physics, that's all it is. And so you have a, a, a shorter auger on there, that way you can lift the whole thing up, get it above the ground and drive it where you need it to go. This is our mezzanine area up above the office space and it's a bit of a hodgepodge. Um, all the boxes are, all the custom made boxes that we have for Spicos and for uh, Versa brackets and um, you know, we'll have more as other smaller products come out too that we can ship UPS ground. We have a whole foam packing machine and we do as good as we can to get things from point A to point B as safely as possible. Little look right here at uh, stuff that is getting ready to go uh, shipped out on the truck tomorrow morning that comes in here. So you can see everything is banded down really nicely and safely. We use these heavy duty, the heaviest duty plastic bands that you can. You can use the steel ones on there, but they always are going to scuff up the equipment, even with the cardboard protectors that are on there. And so that's what we prefer to use. Um, a lot of this stuff, especially if it's loader mounted, you know, like use this as an example, but um, snow pushers are a really common one. They're going to ship on their back right on the quick connect. And if you want to, you can cut those bands really quick and just flip it over. It will flip pretty easily and then use your loader just to pick it up and take it off the truck. Or of course, use a set of pallet forks if you have those. It is pretty rare. I, I think it's only about 2% of the orders that we ship out require a lift gate. Um, most of you folks have a tractor with a front end loader on there and can get pretty creative to offload the stuff from uh, the semi truck about, you know, four foot high or so down to the ground. So I'd always encourage you to try to do that. Uh, maybe get a set of straps and, and, and strap it to your bucket and get it down to the ground if you need to, but you can normally get pretty creative and avoid that hundred dollar upcharge. Uh, a lot of what you'll see up on these shelves here are going to be UHMW again for snow pushers. Um, we do sell these strips for for anything. You can get those cut to the length that you need. You can put that on your bucket, on your plow if you have it, on your snow blower, uh, whatever it might be. On your rear blade too is a popular one. Um, done videos all about that, but it's a very safe product. It's durable. It's still, it's aggressive, but it's protective. So you can use it on concrete. You can use it on asphalt. It's not going to rip that up or, or mar it up or mark it up. And it's still going to scrape really clean a lot better than rubber. 
And then uh, we do have hitch hangers up there. They're gonna ship out in a little box. Um, it's only, you know, this big or so. So they'll ship UPS ground as well. Uh, a really popular item that we sell as well as a bunch of pallet forks. That's kind of our pallet fork corner up there. I told you about that before. High volume sellers for us. So easy for us to have them at the ready and ship them out to you. This is our small pack room here. And all these boxes are gonna have a Spico inside them. A very high volume seller for us. And a uh, foam packing station over here, we use some uh, some crushed uh, um, uh, paper wrap there too. We sell roughly 200, 250 of these a month and they're gonna come in just like you see, uh, wrapped on, on pallets of 10 and we just unbolt them off of there, uh, put one in a box and send it out to you. Again, these are gonna be coming UPS ground so you don't need to be there to sign for delivery or be there with your tractor to offload. Those UPS guys can take it and put it right by your front door. So these are the mini stump wreckers here. The HD stump wreckers are too big. Uh, too heavy to ship UPS ground, but the minis, we can do that. And so it takes a lot of time, but it's the most cost-effective way to do it. And we've sold thousands of these and we've pretty much perfected uh, the packaging. So we, it's been a long time since we've had uh, a freight claim on one of these. These show up safe and sound to you, but they look kind of goofy, but they're wrapped really well. And again, those same UPS drivers, they're gonna pick these up and drop them off right at your front door. There you go, folks. Complete walkthrough of all the inventory we have on hand right now. If you go to our website, you're gonna see more than that though. So we do work with a whole collection of vendors that we don't carry their products. So what you do is you go to their website, you're gonna get what you want, whether it's a grill guard or a bucket bracket or a material collection system, the list goes on. It's called the Discount Club. It's completely free to you, but you get a discount by using code GWT. Typically 5%, but there's gonna be some websites where you save more than 5% too. There's a whole category Go right to our homepage, you'll see it up there for more information. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, send an email, give us a phone call. We're happy to help. Again, prices include free shipping, rewards, and financing too. Now, if you want to see these attachments in action, we've got nearly 700 videos out there with most of those showing the tools that we sell in various projects or, or feature overviews so you can get a better idea of how that tool will work for you. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.